Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife and welcome to the weekend wrap up. Hey, this has been a crazy busy weekend. We have actually had a wedding here. We've had the chicken stew here and it's been crazy busy. You've seen all my videos of prep work and so forth. So listen, if you're here for the chicken stew video, it's going to be actually on Monday's video. We're going to share with you uh, how he makes the chicken stew outside. Uh, I'll also on that video share with you a link on where to find that recipe and so forth if you wanted to do it like stovetop style. So anyway, but we are on this video. I'm going to show you a little bit of the wedding. I'm going to show you uh, us preparing the firecrackers and uh, maybe a couple of pictures from the chicken stew, but mainly it's going to be couch time and the firecrackers and a little bit of the wedding. So all right, without further ado, let's just jump right into this busy weekend video part one. Okay, so now we're fixing to go to making my firecrackers. I had tons of help this year with the firecrackers. In fact, I did not make the first bag. I just helped and assisted. Uh, many of you saw that Kathy Daniels' mom was here. I think that was on the other video. I'm not sure. Anyway, she was here and helped me make over half of them. And then that evening, Jessica and Caden McPherson came by and helped me make the rest of them. So um, let's share with you the recipe and how I choose to make the firecrackers. Hey everyone, I am outside because what's going on inside is we have got firecracker making. Now, I know several of you have asked for this recipe. I have done videos on this a lot, but I have a special helper. I actually have two special helpers, actually three. This morning on yesterday's video, you saw Kathy come down, which is Daniel's mom. She came down to help me make a whole lot. Jessica's here tonight. She always helps me make firecrackers. And we have Caden McPherson. He is here. He is a young boy in our church who is, loves the firecrackers. He makes them at home. And so I enlisted his help. So he's the one going to show us how to make firecrackers tonight. All right, everybody. Here's Jessica. Hi. And there's Caden. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us what we're doing. Famous firecrackers. So the famous firecrackers. Look how many we have already over here. Hey, 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 everybody. There's Eric. <laughs> the McPherson family. <laughs> I mean, you got total? I don't know. I've lost count. <laughs> I think we're going to end up with 20 okay. crackers. 20 boxes of firecrackers. Okay. So where do we start? So one and two third cups of oil, vegetable oil. Um, if you want a healthier option, you can always do avocado oil. And then Caden is moving on with the a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder. And then he's going to do half a tablespoon, a teaspoon of black pepper. Yep. Caden's a pro at this. He makes these at home. Did you have them for the first time here at the chicken stew? No. You just watched the video. Yep. And then four, four and a half, five big helpings of the Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. You like it like I do, I do five. <laughs> there we go. Good job. Extra won't do yep, harm. that was a good job. And then you're going to do two scoops of these if you do not like them hot. You can do one and a half if you like them hotter. And you could do two and a half, but the longer these crackers sit, the hotter they will get by each day. So now we do everything in the bag. It just makes it easier because we're making so many. And so he's going to show you how we mix it up. The key is to close it well. <laughs> ask me how. So we've learned from experience. Ask me how. Ask us how we know. And see, he's just going to massage it with his hands and mix it up. He's making sure all that ranch dressing gets mixed up there's no clumps or anything and i've stood over here 
And I've opened up these boxes of crackers and I'm actually behind to we'll lay those over there. And so now what he's gonna do, just open the bag and he's gonna dump all four sleeves of the crackers in that bag. And it's okay that oil down at the bottom. Everybody asks me, how long do I bake them? You don't bake them. And it's, I don't know how it works. I don't know, I don't know. But I just know they don't get soggy, they stay crispy, and um, it just works wonderfully. Now you can do these with the oyster crackers if you like that better, but we just do these. So he's gotten all four of the sleeves in there. He's going to close it up real tight again. And this is also a big key to be sure you get it closed because you're going to see in just a second why it's important. Because he's going to shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. There we go. And then... So when he gets that all shook up where he feels like it's really good and coated, there's Jess making hers. He's going to set them over here. And then what I do periodically, you can actually lay it on the stove if you want to. We're running out of room. What I do is for I'll just come back in here and see how it, how it, it gathered right here on one side. You want to keep turning these. You want to keep turning them, standing them up, putting them in different directions so they keep getting coated. All right. There we go. Caden has made his farming pastor's wife debut. All right. We'll be back for more in just a second. Now we're going to skip the chicken stew we'll, we'll share it on tomorrow's video but we had a wedding just prior to the chicken stew so I'm going to share with you a little bit of the wedding and then we'll just end up over on couch time where Bryant will share with you uh, his summary of his Sunday morning sermon so hang tight we're gonna I'm going to show you some pictures and so forth from the wedding this was a private family wedding it was Bryant's brother and um it was just the sweetest little event. It was in our front yard, and I couldn't be more pleased to have had a wedding in our front yard. And little Judabug looked up at me in the middle of the wedding, and he says, When I get married, I want to get married here. And, oh, talk about melting my heart, that did. So, anyway, let me show you um, a little bit of the wedding, and then we'll end up on couch time for his Sunday sermon. Body. Be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. I just want to say that I feel that I love this real. Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal. Hey everyone, welcome to Couch Time. Hey, hey, hey everybody. Hope you've had a wonderful weekend. What did y'all think about that fabulous chicken stew? Well, they actually haven't seen it yet. 
They'll see it on Monday. What do you think about that but fabulous they've seen us prep chicken stew it. preparation? <laughs> They'll, they've seen us prep and they've seen us make the firecrackers. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't know what was on here. <laughs> But, so, uh, yeah, if you're here for the chicken stew, it'll be Monday's video. Monday. So we're going to have a great video for you on Monday. Y'all see how we communicate, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> we had a huge turnout at the chicken stew. It was probably the largest ever, over 200, I would definitely say easily. And uh, we had some bluegrass music. It was great. Great day. Redneck 101. It, it, was it was just beautiful. wonderful. It was a wonderful beautiful, day of fellowship. Wonderful. It was great. So. Yeah. Hey, uh, very quickly, I want to share the sermon today. You guys know I've been uh, preaching a series on made for more. Today was about being made for more other than just existing. You're made to worship. And uh, I, I expressed today out of 2 Samuel chapter 6, where David returns the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. David is excited. But in the process of David returning it back, um, Uzzah was a, uh, was a gentleman that was helping. He touched the ark. God struck him dead. David got angry and David quit moving the ark of the covenant and he was unwilling to move it again. So today I talk about what's worship really look like. We oftentimes we steer clear of talking about worship sometimes because uh, sometimes people think it's fake. Some people th automatically think you're talking about a music style or a physical style of worship, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the embodiment of praising the Lord and what that looks like. And the Bible says when David returned to the Ark of the Covenant, there was a great musical celebration. David danced in the street with excitement because he was totally, totally enthralled with what God had just done. So I talked about three different things about worship today, and I hope you can glean something first from it. The first thing was simply this Worship is personal, a meaning that it's a it's an expression of gratitude for the salvation or the sin debt that God has paid for our lives and our mistakes. Yep. If you have nothing else to be thankful for and to worship God for today, it is the expression of gratitude of what he did on the cross in your place and the life hereafter with him in eternity that you're going to get to have. So that by itself is enough for me to go to church every Sunday and worship from the mountaintops and express yes. my gratitude Amen. as to what he's done for me. Second thing about worship is simply this. Worship is an acknowledgement of his blessings. Every one of us are truly blessed in spite of the difficulties we face, in spite of some of the challenges. Uh, worship is an expression or an appreciation of the blessings in our life. It could be worse. I remember one thing my mom and my dad taught me when I was young. Uh, when I wanted to fuss about a situation, they'd always say, well, well it could be worse. And they're right. There's a lot of things that could be worse. And um, that helps to keep things in perspective. Mm -hmm. And just that by itself gives me enough energy and excitement to go to church and worship. I didn't say you had to raise your hands. I didn't say you had to cry. I didn't say you had to sing really loud. I didn't say you had to dance, play tambourine, do any of those things. Worship is an individual um, posture of your heart before the Father in heaven. You can worship at work. At home. At home. At church. With whatever you're doing. In the car by yourself. Yep. At work with a friend. It doesn't matter. You can worship anywhere. You can express your love to him wherever you are. And thirdly, worship is a um, it's an expression of trust in his sovereignty. You guys probably saw me look at my notes. Anyway, <laughs> He's got his notes. I want to make sure, I want to make sure I got these correct for you today because last week I drew a blank. But anyway, um, Worship is an expression of trust in his sovereignty because sometimes he takes us down paths we don't want to go down. Sometimes he takes us down a path that we didn't expect to go down. And uh, sometimes we go unwillingly. Even then, we have to trust his sovereignty. I made this statement. I said, uh, the participation in the act of worship does not mean the absence of problems or the absence of obstacles. Some people think your life has to be perfect before you can worship. If you wait for a perfect life before you worship, you will never enter into worship. Wasn't it Job that said, yet will I praise him? Yet will I praise in him. In the midst of everything he lost, yet will I praise him. Yeah. So uh, he lost a lot of things, but he still realized how blessed he was. And he was trusting God in his sovereignty. He said this, he said, naked I came into the world and naked I'm going to leave this world. 
uh, because he recognized and realized that God is sovereign in all that he does. So I encourage you, worship like David the king worshiped because he had a heart that was after God. So next Sunday, get excited. Tell the world all about it. Raise your hands if you want to. Cry if you want to. Somehow just express the posture of your heart of how excited you are of everything God has done. for you. So, hey, if you didn't catch the sermon, go back and catch it on Facebook Live. Uh, uh, you can catch it on Rewatch watch Browers Wesleyan Church, or it should be on our YouTube channel tomorrow, Browers Wesleyan Church YouTube by 2 p.m. So that's hey, it. If you've heard a little beeping or a little chirping, uh, forgive us. Uh, one of many smoke detectors, the battery has gone out in that one. And so um, just ignore it. <laughs> she needs to change the battery. <laughs> we need to change the battery. But we've been super busy, but we have plenty of other smoke detectors to keep us safe. So <laughs> stay alive. Stay alive. <laughs> yeah. So just ignore it. We'll have it fixed hopefully by the next, uh, by next week. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are super tired. And we so I think tired. we're going to take a little nap. Siesta. A Sunday nap. I, I'm going to our church camp. Our church camp has a celebration today, and I think he's going to go. I don't think I can make it. I'm that tired. And then after that, somebody in our church passed away, and I'm going to visit. Yeah, we've, we've actually had two deaths this week, so it's it's going to be another busy week. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow because that is the chicken stew. He shares with you how he makes it Secret outside recipe. over the big fire so secret recipe yep Pay attention. not so secret once we put it on youtube and it's actually already on YouTube. yes we've already done it a couple of times it's okay. okay guys thank you so much for joining us we'll see you next time on the farm and pastor's wife remember if the grease is hot enough you, you can, can fry, fry anything. anything bye y'all